Welcome everyone to Directions Live Online. My name is Laura Berman, I'm the Technical Director here at Esri Australia. So just to let you know, we are recording today's session and we will make this available on the Esri Australia events page shortly after today's session. Today, SmarterWorks, a public works management tool. So we've been busy here at Esri Australia and we wanted to share with you um, one of our latest products. Now throughout the session, there will be options um, to ask questions. So please do this at any time through the questions pane um, that you'll see up here on screen. Now at the end of the session, we will come back and there'll be plenty of time where we can answer um, any questions that you might have. So in terms of what we're going to cover today, it is all about SmarterWorks. So we wanted to start off by taking you through a bit of a tour. We'll have a look at the interface and also go through a little bit of a demonstration that takes you through sort of the best ways or the best approach for working with SmarterWorks. We also want to share with you our future development plans. So we'll have a look at a bit of a roadmap. And then most importantly, we'll finish off by letting you know how you can also start using SmarterWorks. So what's the best way to get started? So who'll be leading this discussion today? So I'd love to uh, introduce our presenter, Gary Johnson. So Gary is our Chief Solution Strategist and he's based out of our Melbourne office. So Gary's key role is in leading our innovation and also any new market activity. So he's out there identifying any new partner opportunities, but also testing, prototyping and developing new offerings, including, of course, SmarterWorks. So I'd like to hand over to Gary now to introduce us to our latest product. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Laura. And I'm really excited to be revealing this new product today that uh, my team and I have been working on for the last few months. Esri Australia launched SmarterWorks um, in April of this year and it was one of the first products to be developed out of our innovations lab. So what is SmarterWorks? It's a tool that will allow sharing of capital works plans between councils, state agencies and utilities to help become more efficient in the way that works are planned, scheduled and conducted. SmarterWorks is a national software as a service application that allows the participating organisations to log in and share their works information, view that on a map alongside other organisations' plans and also to identify opportunities to collaborate or where there might be conflicts in scheduling between those plans. We realised that sharing is still a problem for many organisations. You may have a great view of your future capital works plans internally within your organisation, but being able to share that with others was a challenge. Some organisations are doing that by sharing data files with one another or creating other one-to-one -one connections between a utility, a roads agency or a, um, a local government. Through a couple of pilot phases that we did with the Streets Opening Coordination Council in New South Wales and more recently with Smarter Planning Perth, we were able to demonstrate the value of being able to bring your different works plans together and see where you might be able to work together on resurfacing work or might be able to make sure that um, a water main isn't going to be replaced shortly after a road has been resurfaced. So why do we use SmarterWorks? It's all about reducing disruption to the community so that we don't end up having more roadworks than necessary. We don't want that case where you've had a road closed so it's been resurfaced for only to be dug up again a few months later to replace that gas pipe or to do some other um, laying of new fiber infrastructure. Because of that, it improves the life of road assets. 
if you can keep the surface of the road good and not have people digging trenches in it, it's going to have a longer lifespan and save the costs of resurfacing it. And also SmarterWorks highlights to organizations where you might be able to share the costs of uh, remediation work after some roadworks. And there's some great examples of this where um, organizations like a water utility and a council have been able to work together in that resurfacing work and saving you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, recently, there was an example in uh, South Australia where the council spent $600,000 on resurfacing the road and then in less than a year parts of the road were already being dug up to fix and replace water mains. That cost and disruption to taxpayers is just too common occurrence and SmarterWorks is about addressing those issues. SmarterWorks went live in April of this year. Um, it started based on the Streets Opening Coordination Council in New South Wales as the first group of users, which covered Sydney Water, City of Sydney, uh, Canterbury Bankstown Council, and those that you can see on the screen right now. Also, Brisbane City Council, Australia's largest local government, is signed up to use SmarterWorks and will be loading their plans very soon. Smarter Planning Perth is a pilot um, application that's been running for the last few months with the, all the major utilities in Western Australia and the city of Perth. And that's the, the same concept around sharing your data. So it's absolutely in use now. And I guess now we're just starting to talk about it more widely as part of these um, webinars and other launch activities. And how does it work? It's really simple. We're providing a place where you can share and collaborate. Your data remains yours and you remain in control of that. And the first thing is that you need to do is prepare your data and upload it into SmarterWorks. SmarterWorks then becomes the place where other organizations can go to view and map that data. SmarterWorks looks for opportunities to collaborate and looks for scheduling conflicts between above ground and below ground jobs so that you can receive automated alerts to remind you or, or to alert you to the fact that you should be coordinating with other organizations. Then once you've received those alerts and looked at what that means through SmarterWorks, you can start communicating using the messenger functions that are built into the application to start looking at, well, what does it mean? How can we reschedule? How could we work together? And the final step, of course, is that you do that collaboration. You do uh, fix those scheduling conflicts so that you can save the disruptions to the community and save time and money as well. As well as loading projects, organizations can load exclusion zones. And for a local government, this might be um, to highlight when there's going to be a marathon running through your, uh, your LGA, or it might be around um, where there's going to be a parade or sporting or event or concert. This way you can communicate to contractors and utilities that there won't be any road permits given during that time because of that work. But that's enough talking about it. Let's have a look at SmarterWorks. So SmarterWorks is a web application. It's um, hosted at smarterworks.com.au and we sign into this application. And the first thing we'll see is this view showing all the projects and exclusion zones that have been loaded up by the various authorities. And that's what we're looking at on the map here. Each of these clusters is a collection of projects that has been uploaded um, by, in this case, City of Sydney. As we zoom in, we can see individual projects. And these, <coughs> excuse me, um, and each of these projects has got data associated with them around when the job is planned, its status, um, the, uh, the type of job it is, and the status of that job. So as I zoom into this particular area, I'll now see that we have um, jobs from multiple organizations. The green ones here represent the local government jobs from City of Sydney, and blue water jobs from Sydney Water. And we can see, again, that these have got the dates associated with them and these other fields. Where there is overlap, this is where we look at there being an opportunity or a scheduling conflict. But 
as well as looking for automatic um, identification of where those conflicts or opportunities are, we can also define an area of interest. This is where a user of SmarterWorks is saying, I'm maybe planning on doing some work in this area in the future. I'd like to know if anyone else is going to be doing something. So I can define this area of interest, and then when any work happens around there, I'll automatically receive notifications. But what's an opportunity look like? Well, an opportunity is this combination of two projects, my project and some and another organization's project, or even another user within my organization. So when I look at this, I can see now that we've got this white or this dotted outline and the white area which shows this is an opportunity, a place where we should be looking to work together. I might then choose to watch this project. Adding a watch to a project means that as the status moves from proposed to confirmed to under construction, I'll receive notifications. So again, I can keep track of what's happening with works from other organizations. And finally, within this part of the demo, we look at how we can communicate with each other. So here, I'm messaging the owner of the other project to say, hey, let's have a look at when we might be able to work together on this one. Let's have a chat about it. And each of these messages, messages goes into a full sort of instant messaging type application between different SmarterWorks users. So in that demo, we were looking at um, what data is in there, how I might look at it, how I can register my interest in certain areas and watch particular projects. And also I saw some of those opportunities that are there. The next question is, well, what data do I need to load? How do I go about doing that? There's two types of entity that I load into SmarterWorks. There's projects, which represent any construction work that's planned, and exclusion zones, things like the um, sporting event or street parade. The data that I load on a project is pretty straightforward. It's a start date and an end date, uh, the ID that I know of in my organization, the type of job, and there's about 20 different types that it might load, a status of that, proposed, confirmed, under construction or closed, and a notes field where I can just share general information with others about what that job is. Also, really importantly, we have the contact or the project owner, and this is used to send out emails to the owner to let them know about conflicts and also for that communicating between the different um, organizations. And exclusion zones are pretty similar, just a few less fields required on those. As part of that process of loading my data, I also define rules that say when I might classify something as being an opportunity. And this will depend on how flexible I am within how I can move around my projects. In this example here, I've got a buffer of two years before and after my project. And what that means is that if another project is found in the same area that I'm planning to work, that is planned for two years after mine, then I will be notified about that because there's a chance that we can talk to each other and align these better. So let's actually have a look at the data loading piece itself. So this is, again, within SmarterWorks. <clears throat> well, I go to the data um, option. Um, because I've got a role that allows me to publish data, I start creating now a new data set. So I simply go and upload that from a file that I might have exported from a GIS system. Here I'm loading a set of projects that are in an Esri shapefile. But we can accept many different formats, map info tab file, a KML file, or a file geodatabase. Once I've selected my file, I upload it, and it gets validated here. Checks for simple things like, is the date in the past, but the project is still currently only proposed? And once we've loaded my projects, I just simply continue on to, to load my exclusion zones. If I want to, I can make small edits directly within this environment, but I won't do that in this demo. Exclusion zones are loaded just like projects. I select my file, it gets validated, and I can continue on. Here again, I'm using shapefile, but it could be a tab file or any other spatial data file. We can start to see on the map, I'm immediately getting some feedback on what I've loaded. 
and start to see these projects here. I've actually got an exclusion zone over that, so I'll just turn that one off. And now I can see the, these projects are starting to be visible on the map. Let's continue on. So the next piece is where I can define my matching rules, setting, as I said, the time um, before and after my projects, what I'd want to be notified about. So let's just change those to three years after, one year before, and also change the distance between two projects that would classify them as being potential opportunities for me. And some other options like, should I find an opportunity where the, the person responsible for the project is the same on both? I've said no, but I can match for those for different owners within my organization. As I've done this, I now get to see what is going to be identified here. And so it's telling me that there's a load of opportunities that have been found, and I can preview them. At this stage, my data is still private. I'm seeing it inside my organization, but I haven't yet made it public. And that's what the Publish Data button does, is it now makes it so that all the other users of SmarterWorks can start viewing that data. And as I see on the map now, a lot of these opportunities that were just created are becoming visible. This is an opportunity that's just been created from the data that I loaded. It will also appear on my activity feed. The activity feed is, think of it like your Facebook timeline. It's a complete history of what's been discovered as new opportunities, areas of interest where projects have been added, or even those watches that we talked about where those have triggered um, a notification as well. So that's the data load process, pretty straightforward. You don't have to be logged into SmarterWorks all the time to be able to get the benefits of SmarterWorks. You'll also receive emails that notify you of where these collaboration opportunities or conflicts with exclusion zones have been detected. These are example emails here that are telling me that I should probably go and now look in SmarterWorks by clicking on the link and identify whether I can collaborate on this job. Laura mentioned in the intro that we were going to also talk about some of the roadmap of the uh, product as well. And I'm excited to share some of the latest uh, features that we're just bringing to SmarterWorks with you today. Um, SmarterWorks, as I said, launched in April, and we've continued to develop it since then. This month, we're introducing a whole new set of privacy options, allowing you to mark individual projects as private. That means that the project gets loaded into SmarterWorks, it will identify opportunities, but other organizations won't see it. Great for when you've got a job that's really early in the thinking, and you don't really want to be sharing that with others at this point. You can now do editing within the application. And I showed that in the data load very briefly, but as you um, are going in SmarterWorks, I just want to change the dates or simple field. I can do that now directly in the application without having to go and export my data from the GIS and load it again. Uh, SAML integration, for those that know what that is, you'll be excited for those that don't. It's all about single sign-on and it's a, a great addition to be able to connect it with your uh, internal infrastructure in your organization. GIS integration as well, so you're able to view data from SmarterWorks on your own map viewer. So if you're using, uh, for example, something like ArcGIS Online, you can add the layers from, uh, from SmarterWorks as things that you can view within your own, own maps and share those internally. And we're also adding new features like being able to export data from here. So once the opportunities have been found, click on the export button and that becomes something that, um, uh, th that you can then load into your map info viewer or whatever else you're using. I guess the obvious question is, so how much? Um, well, we're all about providing this as somewhere where you can share. Um, I think we've priced it competitively so that you can um, easily achieve this. We have three levels of pricing. For any organization that's a local government um, council, there's a subscription fee for your organization of $5,000 a year. For anything that's not uh, local government, operating statewide, uh, that's $25,000. If you want to work in more than one state, then there's that national price as well. And each of these comes with a number of users. Um, and a user represents one of those project managers um, in your organization. So for example, a, a state organization comes with 
125 users, which hopefully is plenty for your needs, but if you need more, then talk to us as well. Hopefully I've excited you by what we've shown today. Um, if you want to get signed up, please just head over to smarterworks.com.au where you'll find links there to uh, register your interest and also to contact um, uh, one of our sales team if you want to, to find out more. And we've also got a help site at help.smarterworks.com.au which contains some really detailed information about things like how do I load my data, um, what is the definition of an opportunity and so on. So if you really want to get into the deep weeds of this product then please head over there um, and you can email us info at smarterworks.com.au. Uh, so thanks very much for listening and uh, Laura, hand back to you. Thanks, Gary. So please do, um, if you've got any questions, do let us know. Um, you can do that through the questions pane. Um, I have had a couple come through already throughout the discussion. Um, so one that came through from Ben, uh, he asked, um, can SmarterWorks work with non-ESRI technology? Uh, great question, Ben. Thanks for that. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, in terms of the way that you load data into SmarterWorks, we've made sure it's pretty agnostic. Um, you can use KML files, MapInfo tab files, or um, shape files to load that data. Um, we've made sure that there's no you know, restrictions meeting, needing to be ESRI, and also in terms of exporting data out, you can export data out in those same formats as well. So export your opportunities out and view them in your, your MapInfo viewer, if that's what you want to do. Okay, great. And Craig also asked a similar question, so that's good. Um, we've got a question from, from Matthew and he asks, um, can you upload works or exclusions via script? So an automated process for the user, so they don't have to log on. So what we're planning to do with the API that sits behind SmarterWorks is publish that as something that you can use to do automation and integration. It's currently on the roadmap for something to happen later this year. Um, so at the moment today, it's not scriptable, um, but the APIs are there and we're gonna be publishing those in a few months so that you can start building that automatic integration. Okay, um, Rob asks, is there a rollout, rollout planned for Victoria? The product is available right now. It's, uh, you know, anyone can sign up. We had um, some Victorian water authorities and local governments in the office here in Melbourne yesterday talking about it. And so the rollout is, is now. So sign up and, um, and you can be part of that Victorian set of initial clients. Okay, so um, just uh, okay, I guess an add-on to that question, what about internationally? Is this just an Australian-only product? So at the moment this is, it was developed in Australia, it's been launched for Australia. We would love to see this start being used elsewhere in the world. Uh, we want to make sure that the Australian client base is serviced first and gets all of the, the benefits of our focus, but definitely we'll be taking it overseas. We've already got plans to move um, well beyond Australia. Um, and hope to do that later this year, if, if not then, early next year. A question from Craig. Um, does SmarterWorks automatically connect with other users in a local area? When organisations sign up with SmarterWorks, you automatically get visibility of any other organisation that either overlaps or neighbours your area of operation, as we call it. So yes, if you've got smarter works um, for your water utility and for the local government that overlap each other, you'll automatically see each other's data. Um, there are options to hide it and have your own privacy settings, but we're all about sharing and collaboration. So it's, it's automatic. That's how it starts up as the default. Okay, so a little bit connected from this. So um, Matthew asks, um, if you're viewing activity and you can see other, other organisations work that say under construction today, um, can you add that s service to something like Geocortex? So you might have some information that you're using elsewhere. 
Yeah, great question. Yeah, so, so this month um, we've just launched, actually yesterday, the GIS integration um, features for SmarterWorks, and that exposes the data um, as GIS web services that a tool like Geocortex can consume and add to its table of contents and include in a map um, so that you can see SmarterWorks data against your own organization's internal data. Yeah, and we're, we're looking forward to, to seeing people do that. As they launched yesterday, and um, can't wait for, to see people actually doing it. Thanks, Gary. That's great. Um, so it's a really good session. I think it's um, got everyone started. Um, in terms of a couple of people have asked me about a recording, and yes, absolutely, a recording of today's session um, and all of our webinars uh, will be is available on our Esri events page. So today's particular webinar uh, will be available the next day or so, and you should, um, if you signed up, you should get an email that will let you know about that. And lots of information available at smarterworks.com.au head over there and you'll find presentations and materials and links to the help site and so on as well. So, so please make sure you, you go to smarterworks.com.au. Thanks, Gary. So what's next for Directions Live Online? Um, so based on your feedback, um, next week we've scheduled another ArcGIS Pro webinar. This one, we're going back to basics and sort of giving you a chance to understand if you're getting started with the product, what's the best way to get to know it. Um, so I've got Tar coming um, to talk to us about that. Um, now in terms of getting in contact with us, please do uh, let us know um, if there's anything you'd like to hear about. You can do that in the survey that will pop up at the end of the webinar, uh, but also um, at events at esriaustralia.com.au. As I mentioned, the recording will, will be available um, shortly, um, so you can then watch that again or maybe share it with your colleagues as well. Um, and just want to thank everyone for um, tuning in today. One last announcement that I, I can't not share with you is a reminder that um, OSRI uh, registrations are now open. So please make sure that you head to our website um, and register now. Um, so we'll be hitting Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane uh, in August. Um, we've got details of our program being released um, every day. It's going to be a really great event. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing everybody um, this year with Osri being back. Uh, so with that, um, I'll close off today. I'll thanks Gary again um, for showing us SmarterWorks and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>